elderly people in this country are vulnerable to this. There's a statistic that I read yesterday that was says one million of our elderly people in this country will not have spoken to anybody in the last month. So that oh tells you, it's a terrible statistic. The elderly have time, they have savings, and they have trust. And that is why they fall victim to this kind of... And also when you've got someone on the phone who, uh, and we all like that, someone on the phone who's very helpful and, uh, and very positive, that's... that's and if terrific. your relatives don't have time for you, then, oh, this nice young man's here to help. Well, the, so, the British consumers, this is trading standards, say the British consumers lose around £3.5 billion pounds to scams every year. That's £70 pounds for every adult living in the UK. And Sadly, the majority of them will be elderly. So what are the latest scams? Well, the latest scams are that courier fraud where they pick up your things or the transferring money. So let's have a look at the, the main ways that you can be conned or duped. And please pay attention, look at this with the eyes of your elderly neighbour or relative. Um, and as I said, don't assume that somebody has somebody looking after them. It mm. may be that you do need to pop around and help your elderly neighbour. Well, also, I mean, I, I know people who've been conned, and they've they've not been elderly. I mean, this is not just this is this is a they're, they're no. clever folk. Uh, the these con absolutely. people. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so no matter who you are, you should pay attention to yes, this. Yes, it's just a shame they don't put their clever ways into positive business. So here are the scams to watch out for. By post, they can get you by post. Often, the, often this is pyramid selling, competitions, business opportunities. They'll all come in the form of either junk mail or they may be addressed to you. What you can do to help that person is you sign them up to the mailing preference service, um, which we're going to give all these addresses and telephone numbers. We're going to put them on a fact sheet so you can get that at the end of the programme. We'll make it very clear, so don't panic about getting this information down. Um, what they're generally doing is getting you to call a premium rate number and hanging on, and they make money out of you that way. Or they're fishing for your bank details. Um, so obviously you don't want them to do that. You Basically, you should put something on the door saying no junk mail, so that eliminates the need for that. Sign them up to the mail preference service and put a box by the front door and say to your relative or friend or neighbour, anything you're not sure about, pop it in that box and I'll go through it once a week for you. And then you can go through, you can see what's coming in and you can take them off the list, OK? Mm -hmm. Next, uh, probably the phone is the most common. Telephone pre preference service, again, get them off those lists. It's illegal for anybody legitimate to call you within 28 days of you registering for the telephone preference service. What if they're calling from abroad, though? Calling from abroad, of course, they can get round that. And if they're not legitimate, they don't give two hoots about the telephone preference service mm. slightly. So My mum's got a bit. She went to, uh, uh, to her telephone provider, which is the... the quite a big one that begins mm. with B and ends in T. Right, I, and, I know which um, one you're talking about. And they, they provided a phone which shields international calls. Obviously, if you call internationally legitimately, right. then you don't get it. Just and, and, uh, and it goes straight through to an answering machine, and, and they tend not to want to leave messages. So yep. she's, she's shielded anyway. It doesn't ring. Perfect, and I think idea. most major providers will do that for you, actually. Or you, what you can do is just, it sounds obvious, but leave a piece of paper by the phone that says, do not give your bank details out. Do not give any credit card details out. Take a name and number and say, it's not convenient, I've got somebody with me at the moment. Elderly people tend to be very, very polite. They come from a very polite generation. Um, you can say, it's not convenient, I've got somebody with you at the moment, I'm going to call you back. And that's okay to hang up then. But if you leave that prompt by the phone, it's there, mm. it's in the face, and it's a reminder. Because we all forget things as soon as we pick up the phone. What about email and text? Emails often, this is, um, and text. Text we know, don't reply to it, forward the text. to. Sp it spells out scam, 7266. Look at the letters on your phone, 7266 spells out scam, and forward the text to that. Do you get charged Don't reply it? to it, no. All oh, right. Okay. Don't reply to it, OK? A lot of people um, are getting emails at the moment asking for donations to major disasters that have just happened or charitable things you've seen. That may be a complete con. What you can do is, if you're close to a relative, you can set up a relationship with their bank whereby anything unusual that's suddenly going out, a large amount that's, that's unpredicted, then they can contact you or the elderly person, just do a double check. And also, that bank can set up a password. So if they were ever to call somebody who's on their own and more, more vulnerable, they have a password. That's a really good, that I think that's a good idea for everybody. Absolutely. Actually. Yes, of course it is. A password that nobody else knows anything about and you do not say to anybody. Yeah. So um, Can you do that for all um, so you see, gas, electricity, all those sorts of things? Absolutely. The gas, the electricity, even if you've made an appointment, they're coming round to read the meters, 
they should have a password and you don't open the door. Mm. So talking of not opening the door, the doorstep is the other way that most people, elderly people opening the door, people living on their own, mm. opening the door to somebody, never, never open the door. Get a view hole, um, you know, a, a viewer, get a chain put on the door, the police will help with that. Age UK will help with that. They have reputable workmen who will go around and deal with elderly people in mm. a sensitive way. Don't open the door, never, never let anybody in. And again, stick something on the back of the door that is a reminder. No, Nobody comes in without an appointment. It just jogs the memory. Don't open the door mm. because once they're in, you won't get rid of them. And there's other ways that you really need to handle it with elderly people. You don't want to say, if you're the relative, you don't want to go up to them and say, look, don't be so stupid, don't answer the phone, throw that junk mail away, don't get cross with them, because then what happens is the con man, who's more gentle with the time, will have their ear, mm -hmm. and you'll be the bossy nagging one. So there's, there's a whole psychology of how you should deal with it. My nan's more savvy than I am. Oh, really? I have to say. <laughs> yeah, she's much more sort of switched on and smart to things like that. I'm more, I'm actually more accepting and more kind of like... I think what? it's a very much, not necessarily just age, but it's just no, your personality. I, yeah. you know I think yeah. you're right. I keep saying elderly people just because... I know, there is a the focus item on that's them what we're doing. No, I at the moment. But, yeah. And the majority are, that, uh, that are conned are Well, they are will be, because yeah. uh, there's many yeah. people living on their own and they don't have that voice of reason, the second opinion, in the house.